<laughs> the Jets, the jewels, the spectacle of Berkshire Hathaway weekend. For three days, Warren Buffett's influence on Omaha is easy for anyone to see. All kinds of good things have happened in Omaha. Omaha's a terrific city. But beyond the shareholders meeting, Buffett's effect is hiding in plain sight every day of the year. I think it's terrific and what I really, it makes me feel good that the people who joined me, uh, you know, 50, 60 years ago, uh, overwhelmingly, they've used that money for philanthropic purposes. I hope he takes a lot of pride in it because I, th I think it's absolutely amazing. This is the story of those who trusted Warren with a nest egg decades ago and who chose to give back and make Omaha a better place. Does the magnitude of your philanthropy exist without Berkshire Hathaway? Not at all. It's all due, all due to Berkshire Hathaway. This is KETV Newswatch 7 Chronicle, The Buffett Impact. Omaha's finely tuned home for the performing arts. Thanks for joining us, I'm David Earle. The Holland Center is just one example of the Buffett impact, a gift to the city financed mostly through donations. Richard and Mary Holland worked hard for their money and gave a lot of it back to Omaha. So did Bill and Ruth Scott, Stanley Turleson, Carl Mammel, the common thread among all of them, they crossed paths early in life with Warren Buffett. In the 50s, they found a trustworthy young man who many recognized as a genius in tune with how to build wealth. Most who invested with him early on made a fortune and many have given so much back. Get some time in talking with us today. That brings us to why we're here. Warren Buffett is not a man who spends a lot of time in interviews, but he agreed to sit down with us to talk about his friends and the impact they've made with the money they first entrusted to him. I think it's terrific and what I really, it makes me feel good that the people who joined me, uh, you know, 50, 60 years ago, uh, overwhelmingly, they've used that money for philanthropic purposes. Some met him first in the classroom when Warren Buffett volunteered to teach. It was a four-week course in intelligent investing at what was then Omaha University. I was quickly a, quite an admirer of him because I, it was the first time I had ever run into anybody that explained uh, investment strategies in a way that I thought made a hell of a lot of sense. There were a lot of there were friends of mine that would uh, that would come out. Uh, and take those classes, and I, I, I met a lot of nice people through, uh, through teaching there early on. Some of the students became clients and gave their money to Buffett to invest. A few moments in time that changed lives and changed Omaha. Our money, that $7 million that we started with in 1962, which actually came out of 105,000 in 1956, but that, that was overwhelmingly Omaha money. And that's where Ruth and Bill Scott come in. We went without a lot of things that young kids don't go without today to start our nest egg so that we had money to put into the Buffett Partnerships. Both were students at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln in the early 50s. Before the decade was over, Bill had joined the Buffett Partnership. We hit it off. I mean, he, he already had the same investment philosophy I did, so we were in sync right from the beginning. The rest, as they say, is history. Bill's work made him and his wife Ruth quite wealthy. It's all the compound interest, right John? Yes. Son John Scott joined his mom, now 88 years old, for an interview about the family's philanthropy. You decided to start giving during your lifetimes and not after, and I wonder how that has, how has that impacted you? Oh, it had a great impact. Uh, originally, we did not intend to do that. We were just going to leave it uh, for our heirs to distribute. And uh, then one day I said to Bill, maybe it'd be more fun to do this while we're living instead of when we're dead. And it, it's been a ball. It's been a lot of fun. The Scots, largely with John's help, have given millions of dollars to causes all around Omaha and Nebraska. 
It's home. Ruth grew up on a farm in Ashland, and that rural upbringing informed a lifetime of living. Ruth and Bill would receive the Regents Medal, the highest honor the University of Nebraska can bestow. Well, when we were given the Regents Medal, I did a little background on my life on the farm. And as a closing statement, I mentioned that uh, we had a manure pile, and a pile of money was not very much different than a pile of manure. Neither one did any good till you spread it around. It would have done no one any good either if Bill Scott hadn't just worked for Buffett, but invested with him too. The money would grow and grow. The patience paid off. They like it when people are better off because they've got these little pieces of paper that they can convert into something terribly useful to the community. Those little pieces of paper Warren talks about are shares of Berkshire Hathaway. They've grown to a value of more than $300,000 a piece in May 2019. They could buy a lot, but Warren knows his friends well. They're satisfied, very satisfied with their lives, and they look around and they, they want to they wanna help other people. And, and Bill and Ruth are classic examples of that. Ruth, does the magnitude of your philanthropy exist without Berkshire Hathaway? <laughs> Not at all. It's all due, to, all due to Berkshire Hathaway. You don't have to look far to find the wealth at work. Perhaps no place has changed more drastically with Bill and Ruth Scott's Berkshire Hathaway fortune than UNMC. They made it feel like a campus and they helped give the College of Public Health a home. The attention of the nation was on Omaha as jets carrying Ebola patients from Africa landed here. The Americans on board were sick with the killer contagion. Their hope for survival? The medical experts at UNMC. This is a, a very serious viral infection and to survive, you have to build up enough antibodies to neutralize the virus. Over the course of several months in 2014, the biocontainment unit would treat three patients, two successfully. Many of those experts guiding the treatment teach in the College of Public Health. I think the College of Public Health went in at a key time. There'd been a College of Public Health with no building for, what, about 10 years. And uh, then with the Ebola crisis, um, I think it put our College of Public Health, you know, on the national map really fast. Investments at UNMC have a goal for the Scots. They're focused on outcomes, on lives made better. And we're trying to make Nebraska the healthiest state in the union. The latest rankings from the United Health Foundation have Nebraska faring well, coming in at 15th healthiest out of 50. Other places at UNMC were made possible with money from Berkshire Wealth too, like the Eye Institute named for Stanley Turlson, an ophthalmologist who met Warren Buffett early on. I had a group of 11 doctors and they gave me $10,000 each. and. And they just let it ride. Buffett family donations helped build the $320 million Fred and Pamela Buffett Cancer Center. Fred was Warren's cousin who died after a cancer fight in 1997. His wife Pamela spoke about her late husband in 2016, just months before the building officially opened. He would be so proud to have his name on such a wonderful place and that's going to give life and hope and grace and love to many, many families and cancer patients. UNO has benefited from Berkshire Wealth too. Mammal Hall, home of the business school, bears the name of early investor Carl Mammal. It was the largest single donation in UNO's history. The Scots Mark is present here too. They've provided a home for the university's nationally recognized biomechanics program. Students and researchers are investigating how virtual reality can help stroke survivors regain mobility. They're using 3D printers for prosthetics and they're uncovering new movement linked warnings for COPD, the third leading cause of death in America. We can think big. We can uh, be inspired to innovative and creative programs. Chancellor Jeffrey Gold oversees both UNMC and UNO and watches the work happening. The Berkshire investors, the Berkshire family of philanthropists are, are very concerned about making sure that they're building a sustainable future. I love driving by some of the things and think because of Berkshire Hathaway, we have this and that. And usually every time we do a project, I send Warren a little picture and it said, here's some of your, some of your money at work.
It's not all science. Ruth Scott's interests stretch beyond clinics and labs. I happen to be just a volleyball nut. Creighton University cut the ribbon on a new women's athletic facility in 2019. The athletes are already affectionately calling their new home the Ruth. We begged to call this the Ruth. They don't want anything named after them. Creighton's volleyball coach explains how this new space came to be. And we just finished the championship center and our men's basketball team have this has a beautiful lounge. And, and she turned to Marissa and if you know Ruth, she's got a beautiful high pitched voice. And she's like, do you guys have a lounge like men's basketball? And Marissa said, no, but we have nice locker rooms. Well, the next day she went to RAS and said, get those players a lounge, but the criteria is I'll pay for it as long as it's nicer than the men's lounge. Yes, anything for the girls. We've done things for uh, women's athletics in the underserved areas, and some of those teams have really blossomed yeah. because of the facilities. When we talk about supporting athletics for both women and underserved communities, it's uh, about creating equity so that everybody's got at least some level of a, of a playing field that where everybody can succeed. Son John Scott helps guide his parents' donations and knows good partners when he sees them. Great leadership just goes a long way for setting the tone uh, for uh, organizations that really make a difference. Perhaps that leadership quality is what drew John's father to Warren all those years ago. Warren will tell you Bill and Ruth Scott are leaders in their own right. I'm thankful to Bill for all he, he's done with Berkshire Hathaway, and I'm thankful to both Bill and Ruth for what they've done with uh, you know, their share of the proceeds. Richard and Mary Holland took their proceeds and chose to give back in their own way, a lasting legacy that will benefit generations to come. There's a whole history to be built around what happens after you do something like this. That's Richard Holland with his wife Mary in a 2005 KETV News Watch 7 interview. They're showing off the cultural landmark they helped create in downtown Omaha, a performing arts center that bears the family name. A family friend chose the spot for the premiere of a documentary about his life. Yes, Dick and Mary Holland were close with Warren Buffett, forming a lifelong bond in the 1950s. We golfed together, we played ping pong together, we played bridge together. And then they invested with, with me. And, and Dick really loved giving it back to the community. And uh, I mean, he enjoyed every minute of it. What we're going to do is double the size of this building and all of this so that we can accommodate and take care of more children. And all I can say about that is, if that isn't good for our community, what is? While the Hollands cherish the arts, they care deeply about people too, especially the youngest. The Child Saving Institute's campus bears Mary's name. All the things we do make us wish we had lots longer to live because there is so much to do. Mary Holland died in 2006 and her husband passed in 2013. Dick once said, if you've had the good fortune to earn a fortune, share it generously with others. So many in Holland's hometown have benefited from a friendship that lasted a lifetime. I've really never been disappointed with my good friends. I call, some of them I call my heroes, but I've, I've had the good luck that the people that I've really liked and associated with, and, 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 and in some cases they were teachers to me, they, they've never really let me down. And there are other heroes, champions of community projects providing new opportunity and new hope. If you lived in the neighborhoods that kind of ring this site, you know, it's got to be exciting to, to see some life come back. Next, the Buffett impact on generations to come. We have about 4,000 kids a year on scholarship. 